Hello, so in this video I'll talk a little bit about properties and I would argue that this is a good place to start for total beginners because it's quite a fundamental topic and so um, well properties we can find them on objects and on objects only as far as I know so <clears throat> how do we know we're dealing with an object well in this case I've imported or dragged in a polysphere from Maya and then I'm outputting this so anytime we're dealing with an object we're seeing this color this bluish lilac purplish color and uh, then we know we're dealing with properties and if I hover over this output port at the bottom I can see it's amino object and it's also saying mesh so this is a mesh object, but we can have other types of objects. <clears throat> we can have strands objects, we can have uh, particle object, point object, volume, and there's other ones I probably can't think of right now. So the point here is that different objects come with different properties by default, although some of them could be shared. So if I want to see the properties for a given object, I can add a watch point. Now here I can see a list of properties, but I should probably mention that these are, as far as I know, geo properties and not properties. So there's a little distinction there. And uh, what does that mean? Well, we can see here on the right that these properties are targeting specific components. So if I look at this property here named point position, it's targeting point components, same for the normal. So these properties exist per point. So we can assume that this sphere here has 382 points. And so for each of those points, uh, I have some data and so when we're dealing with faces, then we're dealing with face components and so on. Now, if I want to tweak any of those properties, I want to change any of those properties, what I have to do is a three-step process. And so I kind of like to think of these properties as genes of an organism. Obviously, that's not a perfect analogy, but uh, I just like it. So I have to do some gene manipulation. And so anytime I want to change the appearance or the behavior of an object, I have to change a property or multiple properties. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a three-step process. We have to get the data from the property. We have to manipulate it somehow, and then we have to set it back to the object. Now, in theory, you could also skip this part because maybe you want to set a property not based on its previously existing state, but uh, in this case, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stick with point position because I think it's the most intuitive one, but the process is the same for other properties. So I'm going to get geo property. That's the note I'm using. What object do I want to get the property from? Well, this guy here. So that's what I have to plug in here. And we can see it's orange. So it is airing at the moment by default. And that's because it doesn't know what data type it's dealing with. So we have to tell it that. And we can see here it's an array of MathFlow3, that's basically just a list of vectors. And so that's what I'm going to set here. And now it's uh, happy. So which property do I want? Well, point position. So that's what I'm going to type in here. And have to make sure I spelled correctly, otherwise it's not going to work. And so now we should have the data coming out of this port here. I can do whatever I want with it, so this is the part that depends on, you know, your use case. So I'm going to do something incredibly simple. I'm just going to, I'm going to just take these point positions and add to it some 
fractal turbulence. This is going to output a vector. At the bottom we can see math flow 3, so that's good. I will use the point positions to sample this noise, and I'm going to add it back to the original point positions. And then, so this is my second step, and then instead of getting the property, I have to set it. So set geo property right here. I want to set it again on this object. Maybe I'll move this up a bit. And, um, well, I'm using this data. And so we're missing one step. We need to tell it the property. I could set it on any property, really, but... Uh, Obviously, I want to use point position, and again, it's really important you spell this correctly, but I think I've done an okay job at spelling it, so let's see what happens. If I plug this in here, you can see now that the fractal turbulence is indeed displacing these points. And I could change the frequency and the magnitude and whatnot, but this is not really relevant for this video. So, what happens if I don't spell it right? What if I just spell this with a double N? If I hit enter, watch what happens here. You're just popping back to its previous state because now it's not updating that property. But if we look closely, you can see here it created a new property with that name. So now I'm storing my data here on that new property. So this can be really useful in some cases. Um, you can create your own properties, maybe in a solver particle, kind of a solver, or, you know. There's another node, set geo property data, and this node, you can use this when the property that you're setting already exists, which, of course, it does here. So, if we can see here, this node has a target that I mentioned previously. So it was already pre-filled with point component because that's very common. And so we didn't have to change anything there. But if we're dealing with faces, maybe you would have to change this. But with this node, this port here doesn't exist because it can already figure it out on its own. So it's just a little more convenient. And uh, this comes pre-filled with point position, which is fine for our case. So if I plug this in here, you can see we got our deformation back. And so this is the very basics of getting and setting properties. Initially, you know, I said that these listed properties are geo properties, but there's also set and get property like this. So with this, we can set or we can store some data on the object independent from um, an object's components. So if I plug this in here, and by the way, for some reason the property here on these nodes is called property, and here it's called key, but it really is the same thing as where you name a property. So if I wanted to create my own property with a data type string because I want to use some text. So I could create a value node. I could cut, type it right there, but I'm just going to use this value node. And let's say I use the text hello and I call this greeting. And now I can plug this in here and I've stored this now just a simple string on the object as a property. But if I add a watch point, we can see here, or we can see the property name. It's not listed, and that's because this really only lists geo properties, as I said. So that's just how it is at the moment, but uh, well, it's what it is, and uh, you can. If you want to see all your data, all your properties, you, what you can do is use a dump object and they would have to specify a folder. And then you could write a text file to your hard drive and you have to make sure your sample size is big enough. And then you would indeed see this um, property showing up. 
And um, so maybe you've used Bifrost before and you're wondering, why are you doing this way? You know, because maybe you're saying, okay, um, I've used this before, I've done this before, I've used get point position, set point position. These compounds do exist, of course. And they are probably a better way of doing this because they're more convenient. All you have to do is plug in the geometry and you're good to go. But this is the kind of the manual way. And these compounds, if you look inside, well, what do we see? It's just another get geo property node that's already got the type set and it's already got the name set for you. So whenever these exist, I think it's good to use them, but they don't exist for every single property. And that's why it's good to know how to do it manually. And you'll see these nodes all over the place in all kinds of compounds. So if we're using something a little more high level, like a basic particle graph, and maybe I'll use this um, deformed sphere as an emitter. If I plug it in here and hit play. Oh, we can see particles emitting and we can also see the properties for this particles object. Now we can see at the bottom left it's not a mesh but it's a particles object. And this is the default properties that it comes with. So we can see point position here too, obviously, because we're dealing with points. And um, so basically this is just a really fancy and complex network that will set these properties and change them over time based on the settings, you know, based on whatever you do here. Maybe you have influences. And if we look inside somewhere, uh, let's see if I can find one. Maybe you go here and um, collide, maybe here. And uh, yeah, so here we can see this is another one of those where you know we've seen set point position, it's just a uh, set uh, geo property node. And we can also see a similar thing for set point velocity. It's also using set geo property node. So these nodes are all over the place in all kinds of compounds. And essentially that's what's happening. So um, that's my little introduction to properties. Obviously there's a lot more to it, um, but hopefully this should get you started.